said that the geometry of the dream place he saw was abnormal, non-Euclidean, and loathsomely redolent of spheres. Non-Euclidean, that's the word that H.P. Lovecraft uses to describe Cthulhu's home. What is non-Euclidean geometry? And why is it even scary in the first place? I want to make a liminal space SCP style horror film. I'm looking for the right kind of inspiration. Now, H.P. Lovecraft, the father of modern horror literature, finds something frightening about non-Euclidean geometries. Why is that? Well, if I can tap into this concept, I think I can show you something that you've never seen in a horror film before. So what is non-Euclidean geometry? And why would it even be scary? Conventional geometry has laws, like all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Parallel lines will never meet. And the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But in non-Euclidean geometry, we decide to take one of those laws and have it be broken. And suddenly it leads to all sorts of weird results. There is one idea from spherical non-Euclidean geometry that stood out to me, and it's the paradox of the curved straight line. Let's look at a conventional straight line. In Euclidean geometry, this straight line will go on forever and ever, and it will never intersect itself. It's a straight line, right? It doesn't turn back on itself. But if we enter a non-Euclidean world, specifically a spherical non-Euclidean world, that straight line ends up backwards started. This isn't the same thing as actually walking around a sphere. We just have to portray it that way for the sake of illustrating it. Now this reminds me of being in a nightmare where I run and I run and I run and I just end up right back where I started. You see that light in the tunnel in the distance and you never get any closer no matter how fast you sprint. That's very stressful, very dramatic, perfect for a horror film. As we try to place ourselves into mind-bending non-Euclidean worlds like spherical space and hyperbolic space, I want to take you on a journey to the craziest of all of them, Squarespace. Today's sponsor. The laws of math might be rigid, but Squarespace's new Fluid Engine is not. You can customize and rearrange elements on your website to your liking. The only limit is your imagination. With options like credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, even Afterpay in eligible countries, Squarespace makes it easy to accept payments for your online store. If you look at Squarespace from this angle, you can see that it offers a way to create a unique brand identity for yourself online. And if you then look at it from this angle, you can also see that it's a way to connect all your social media accounts to run everything under one package. So really, no matter what way you look at it, Squarespace has exactly what you need. When you are ready to enter the Squarespace, you can head on over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew for 10% off your first website or domain. Now, I need to figure out how I'm going to represent an impossible non-Euclidean space in my film. Hi, Dean. <laughs> So how am I actually gonna show this on camera? How will I portray a character in a impossible non-Euclidean world? Well, keep in mind, to the characters in the space, it doesn't appear to be curved or loop, but paradoxically, it does. And we need to capture that essence. So there's one artist that I think has mastered the portrayal of non-Euclidean geometry, and that's one of my favorites, M.C. Escher. I've had this book of M.C. Escher's work since I was about 12 years old, and he's one of my favorite artists. You guys are familiar with the game Portal, right? You open a portal and you can see yourself right in front of you stepping through the portal that you just made and the world warps around you. Well, Escher came up with the same idea in his drawings long before the game Portal existed. When I look at his works, I feel like I'm in 100 places at once. When my eye rests on any particular spot in the picture, it makes sense, but the moment my eye moves, I realize that I'm no longer in the same space and it's disorienting and frankly, it's the exact vibe that I am going for. And one of my favorite pictures here that I think really captures the idea of what I'm trying to do in a short film is this picture of us in a gallery with a man looking at the painting, but the painting is the city and the city contains the gallery where inside the man is looking at the painting. And it all loops and flows into itself in a recursive void of worlds. These effects are the exact kind of effect that I want to try to capture here. So what would it be like if instead of a weird bird guy, it was a SWAT team dude. And as we followed him through this world, through this room, as he took one step to another spot, he ended up right back where he was. My goal for this gag is to show what it'd be like to be a character here in M.C. Escher's world, which might actually be simpler than you think. What I'm thinking here is that we dress two parts of the hallway to be identical, with the same artwork, the same doors, the same lighting. 
And as we walk through the hallway and we exit one section, we remember where we are relative to everything, reset ourselves back, and then continue the action. And as long as everything is positioned just right, I should be able to theoretically stitch the shots together and then create a looping shot. And I can sell the effect even a little bit more by having the teammates to the main character be falling away as the character walks. For the moment they kind of blink and realize that they're back where they started, they look over their shoulder and the characters are right there standing right next to them. A little bit of a magic trick. All in all, I think this effect worked, but it's also pretty subtle. And as a filmmaker, I want to show something new, something fresh, something that wows people. And for that, I want to return to this paradox of the curved straight line. I need to make an infinite hallway, and I need to show it to us front and center without hiding anything. How am I gonna do this? Well, my first idea here is to make some sort of 3D model of the hallway. Then I can duplicate it to infinity and put some sort of extra 3D model of the exit sign area that just travels with us as we go down the hall. For those of you who are pretty tech savvy and have watched this channel before would probably suggest making a photo scan. Hit the record button and basically start walking down the hallway. But you have to make sure you're taking the time to look at everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting carbonated to the wall right now. <laughs> All right, so now I have a rough 3D model on of the hallway. Hey, there's a little nick in my uh, in my hallway here. It's got the detail. It's decently crisp. <laughs> Looking kind of creepy. But if I line up this angle with the hallway, it doesn't look like my phone's taking a video of the hallway here. If I move it around, it looks like I'm looking at a 3D model. And the reason is those dang reflections on the floor. They just sit there like they're painted on. They don't shine, they don't move. If I change my perspective at all, they, like, they just look like white spots, like dust. When in reality, those are reflections of the lights that are on the ceiling. So as I move my perspective around, that needs to shift. To get this scan to look real, I would have to rebuild all of the lighting in the hallway. And I'd have to repaint all the textures, get the reflections out of them, and then put in new texture maps to dictate where the reflections are and what's being reflective. It's a pretty big hands-on process to get that result. But, there he is. <laughs> God, he's so cool. Sam's been exploring a new experimental piece of technology for a video, but it might be the perfect solution to this problem. So this new technique is called Gaussian Splats, and it is so new that you have not seen it in any TV shows or movies yet. In fact, this video right here is the first time at Corridor that we're going to use this effect in a narrative short film. Ren did an exploration of nerfs and Gaussian Splats back in the day, like a year ago, and that was really the last time we touched it. But there's one magical, incredible property for Gaussian Splats that makes them better in this case than 3D models. A 3D model captures or represents the shape of an object, but a Gaussian Splat doesn't do that. A Gaussian Splat represents how light reaches the camera differently from different points of view. And because of that, they capture perfect reflections. So in order to make a Gaussian Splat, I simply need to go and record the hallway. Then I will load it into Post Shot here and hit Go. So these, these points are basically tracked points in space based on looking at all the footage, and it's kind of geometrically figured out where they are. And these points kind of act as the initial seeds for putting down some colored blotches. It looks pretty good, but man, there's these like floating clouds here. It's kind of blurry, not a lot of brick detail on the side. <laughs> if I turn around, it gets even worse. Ah, oh, man, it's, it's kind of a mess still. It shows promise, right? Like you can see the reflections on the ground moving correctly. Like they look good. All this blur here is gonna ruin the shot if I can't figure out a way to fix this. I have one last thing I can try. I can set my computer to chug on this to just crunch and crunch and crunch for the entire weekend. I'm gonna set it to 600,000 iterations, all right? That's 20 times <laughs> the amount of the default. Maybe it's gonna be super deep fried, we'll see. When I come back on Monday, maybe it will be better. All right, it's been 72 hours. This room's hot for my GPU just cranking. Shout out to Puget, they make really nice computers. Well, kind of looks like if you were inside Disney's crystal. You think it worked? <gasps> Ooh, that's crisp. That looks pretty good. That looks, looks like really a photo. Good. These little details on the floor are reading nicely. There's actually bricks in the shadow. Like there's still a little blurry here, but that's, look at these bricks right here. Mm. Ooh. Check out the floor here. Check out that reflection right there. A little, little black thing so in the middle of the floor that's separate from the reflection. It's kind of interesting because you can actually see through the floor. What you're seeing here is the floor doesn't really exist. It's just transparent and you're seeing dots through it. See, this shine right here is actually just white dots oh. underneath the floor. Same thing Whoa. with like the red shine down here. The floor is just oh, transparent. That's so weird. And you're just seeing the red dots through it. 
like especially these white reflections right here and right here and this orange one like it correctly slides across the floor there if i'm moving fast enough this looks photo real and then right about here is where i'll stack the next hallway this is definitely crisp enough but now I can take this and run it through some very fancy video upscaling. Really give it kind of like that body camera crispness that I'm looking for. Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's go run this through Topaz AI. So now I need to run down this infinite hallway. I want real motion for this body camera, but there's just one problem here. The hallway in real life is not infinite. I cannot run infinitely down the hallway. It's only like 100 feet long. So I need a place outdoors that's just unbroken, a straight line on the ground for me to follow that just goes for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet. Luckily, our street is over 100 years old and has old cobblestone in the middle of it in a straight line running down the entire street. This has been a pain in the butt for potholes because the city needs like extra approval to fix the street and it never happens. But today it pays off. All the potholes are worth it. I can just go out and I can stand on that cobblestone, have that be my fake hallway and I can run down that my iPhone using like CamTrack AR to get motion tracking right out of the box. Don't have to even track it. I can just hit a button and import it into After Effects instantly. All right, so now I've loaded up the Nerf model and I need to align it with my camera. So I'm going to get it kind of set up here so that our camera is right in the center of it. And now if I hit play, dude, kind of trippy. That's very <laughs> trippy. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Now I need to go through and stack more nerfs on top of each other and position them all. And one interesting thing is that the nerfs don't actually like overlap each other in 3D space. They're being rendered out each like individual video layers. Here's our hallway gosh and splat from above here. If I make this first hallway disappear, there's the second render. So this render is just on top of it. How does that look? Let's take a look. So you can see the street way in the distance. <laughs> it's looking pretty good, but we need to add one more piece of magic. I need to put the end of the hallway in the shot and it needs to never get any closer. Here's what I'm going to try doing. I'm going to cut the end of the hallway out of one of our Gaussian splats. And I'm going to put that in the scene. As the camera moves, I want that end of the hallway to stay the same distance away the whole time. So if I attach the end of the hallway to the camera, it should do that. As the camera moves down the hallway, the end of the hallway will move with it. Look at that, it just hobbles on back with it. So as the camera moves, the Nerf moves with it. And from the point of view of the camera, that looks like this. But you can see a problem now. So the position is working correctly. It's traveling at the same rate as the camera, but it's also paired to the rotation of the camera. And now it's just all over the place. It's not sticking to the scene. So theoretically, if I just delete the rotation keyframes and I only keep the position keyframes, the end of the hallway should stay more or less correctly placed in the real hallway. So now if we watch this, the camera's wiggling, but the hallway isn't wiggling at all. We're moving forwards, the camera's moving in 3D space, but the hallway just feels like it's stuck to our screen, but correctly being tracked to that point. Then we should get an effect of moving through the infinite hallway while also having the end of the hallway never get any closer. All right, I think it's working. Oh, whoa, dude, that's so trippy. <laughs> whoa, that is crazy. It's working? It, it feels like, yeah, it starts to feel like a loop at a certain point. This shot is 100% CGI. No way. <laughs> also, the gun here is actually just Compton as well. It's just me like dressed up with my arms in yeah, front of the that, camera as a 3D. I mean, plate. that adds everything. This shot is like, it kind of bends your brain. So the journey to discover non-Euclidean spaces is not over yet because you still have to watch the short. It's over on the Corridor channel, so go check it out. Link in the description. Of course, on screen is an annotation, all that good stuff. And of course, consider subscribing.